Warning. 4.4020 clearance required. The security clearance required to access this document has recently been upgraded. If you have formerly viewed this material and are now unable to, please contact ESS at foundation.scp immediately. Failure to do so will result in disciplinary action. Your visit to this page has already been logged. Attempting to access beyond this point without proper clearance is grounds for immediate termination of employment. Level 4 of 4020 classified. Item number SCP-4020. Index. It won't stop screaming. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-4020 is to be contained in a standard humanoid containment cell in an attempt to stimulate SCP-4020's memory and promote its rehabilitation. It is henceforth to be contained within a fortified reproduction of Dr. LeCroy's current apartment. This has been constructed on sub-level 33 of Site-17 at the request of Dr. Palomi. The facsimile has been copied as faithfully as possible with the following alterations. Note, LeCroy's apartment is located at... All furniture has been bolted or otherwise bonded to the floor. Small spaces that might have allowed SCP-4020 to resist security personnel, such as the underside of the bed, have been filled in. Interior doors have been reinforced and equipped with remotely accessible electronic locks to allow SCP-4020 to be isolated when necessary. The mail slot has been sealed shut since the front door is one of two main access points for Foundation staff, the other being the bedroom cupboard. All glass objects have been replicated instead with damage-resistant polycarbonate. Windows have been imitated by playing looped video footage of the view from Dr. LeCroy's apartment. In the event that SCP-4020 regains the capacity to write, wall-mounted electronic whiteboards have been installed in all rooms. Soundproofing has also been installed at the request of attending staff. SCP-4020 does not require sustenance and is not to be provided with food or liquids. SCP-4020's capacity to ingest nutrition is currently undergoing testing. It is to be administered with various samples under the supervision of the investigating researchers. Feeding timetables will be made available to relevant personnel on a day-to-day -day basis. SCP-4020 is to be attended for three hours each day by a therapist trained in dealing with extreme trauma and speech and language rehabilitation. It may be played music and television programs at the discretion of Dr. Sale. When SCP-4020 is not being attended by a researcher, it shall be monitored at all times by at least one level to level three or above staff member via video and audio surveillance. Any noteworthy changes of behavior or suggestions of coherent language are to be reported to the senior investigative researcher immediately. However, it is also mandated that no staff members assigned to Site-41 or those who have any professional or personal link to staff members of Site-41 are to be permitted access to SCP-4020. To minimize the risk of this, it is recommended that only a select group of staff are allocated to SCP-4020's study and care. Description SCP-4020 is a blonde-haired male Caucasian human with a thick, wiry beard. It is approximately 1.8 meters in height, and its physical age appears to be between 35 and 45. All areas of its skin display heavy scarring from what looks to be numerous small cuts. Despite this, SCP-4020's body currently seems impervious to almost any form of damage. Evidence from the site of its recovery suggests that while it is susceptible to high pressure, its bones and organs cannot be harmed by it. Its flesh cannot be pierced or cut by objects of any sharpness, although it still registers pain when attempts have been made to do so. Its hair and nails also retain this damage-resistant property and cannot be removed from its person. Since entering containment, SCP-4020 has not been recorded as losing a single hair by natural means. It also does not appear to shed dead skin cells. SCP-4020 does not show any signs of aging or other physical alterations. Its hair and nails do not grow. It has so far displayed no capacity for sleep or for losing consciousness. All attempts to chemically alter its condition with sedatives, painkillers and mood enhancers have proved ineffective. It does not require, and indeed seems unable to digest, any foodstuffs. It will consume any presented to it with an appearance of great hunger, but will then expel them again orally within a few minutes. It has also been observed attempting to eat paper and wooden pencils with the same result. As such, it does not produce any other waste. Update. It has been advanced by Dr. McKinley that SCP-4020's inability to retain nourishment may be a result of his prolonged absence from feeding rather than a physical condition. This possibility is being explored. It also does not require oxygen to survive, though it shows great discomfort when none is present. SCP-4020 is believed to have spent approximately 4 million years buried underground in total isolation and considerable pain. See discovery for further particulars. As a result, it is extremely psychologically damaged. Since its recovery, it has spent nearly every moment screaming. The presence or absence of other individuals does not affect this behavior. It has not shown itself to be particularly aggressive to staff members within its vicinity, but 
will attempt to bite, scratch, and beat any who try to touch it. At present, it appears unable to comprehend any form of communication. It will occasionally stamp or repeatedly strike its palms on the ground as if it is trying to crush something. It is also prone to violent fits which it experiences at irregular intervals, often accompanied by attempts to hide itself and to pull its own hair out. In the immediate aftermath of its recovery and confinement, it was observed attempting to push its thumb into its own eye sockets without any success. This behavior has since ceased. DNA recovered from the saliva of SCP-4020 is an exact match for one Dr. Terence Arthur LeCroy, a foundation researcher currently assigned to Site-41. Their official features have also been matched with 96.6% accuracy. It is theorized, though as of yet unproven, that SCP-4020 is a future iteration of Dr. LeCroy that has been transported backwards through time. As such, Dr. LeCroy is nominally to be considered SCP-4020-0. Discovery on... Routine keyword monitoring picked up the following search request from a civilian computer in SCP Class K202140 Foundation Holes. Upon further investigation, the culprit was found to be entirely uninformed about the nature or existence of the Foundation, and revealed that he had seen the words written on a wall within an unnamed cave system in After detailing its location, he was administered with Class B amnestics, and a standard field unit was dispatched to explore the site. They discovered what appeared to be a crude attempt at an SCP document, painted in modern English, some distance beyond the mouth of the cave. Subsequent analysis of the cave wall and the paint substance itself, however, indicated that the writing dated from circa 4 million BCE. This is believed to have been produced by SCP-4020 preceding its burial and is subsequently designated SCP-4020-A. A transcript is given below. SCP-4880490150ZZ9Z5A Class K Content. Pour water in and run away or set fire on entrance. Test. Like spider, flies come from holes everywhere. Spit hurts, sharp tails, stabbing does not kill. Burn, keep fire outside at night. If they do not stop, I will. Go mad, the holes are getting bigger. I cannot remember anymore. I must remember. 2021. Boom goes 41 again. 05 do nothing. Foundation founded. But also... Remember... Copy of a report from Dr. Helen Carter to SCP-4880-490-15ZZ-975A is not attributed to any entity currently classified by the Foundation. And given current SCP designation protocols, it is unlikely to ever be. Likewise, there is no record of creatures which resemble SCP-4020's rather sparse description, although species of arachnid are known to have been present on Earth four million years ago. It is unclear if the sequence of numbers and letters used by SCP-4020 held any particular meaning for it, or if it is simply gibberish. Certainly, the content of SCP-4020-A suggests that the degradation of SCP-4020's mental faculties had begun before its prolonged entrapment. At this point, it's impossible to tell just how long SCP-4020 has existed, or how reliable any of his information may be. Repairing its mind would seem unlikely, if not impossible, and is not recommended as a high priority. Boom Goes 41 again seems most likely to refer to Site 41, given that SCP-4020-0 is currently stationed there. But as warnings go, it's frustratingly vague. No additional security is recommended for this facility. Inspection of the substance of SCP-4020-A shows it to be primarily composed of assorted animal fats and charcoal pigment, a recipe common for cave paintings although, of course, none date back as far as this. However, it also contains an as-yet unidentified hydrocarbon, which appears to be man-made in nature and to have increased SCP-4020-A's resistance to moisture and feeding. Further testing is scheduled. During routine examination of the area surrounding SCP-4020-A, GPERs registered an unusual object approximately 18 meters beneath a segment of the cave system. It displayed an extremely faint heat signature and was found to produce weak, irregular vibrations. GPERs, ground penetrating electro radars. A subsequent excavation of the area unearthed a body of an extremely pale humanoid, now designated SCP 4020. Its legs and lower torso were pinned down by a number of extremely large rocks, while the rest of its body had been buried under smaller rock fragments and soil. Several of the rocks covering its lower body were found to have grooves in them consistent with SCP 4020's fingernails. It is theorized that after its lower body became incapacitated, SCP-4020 was gradually subsumed by earth and debris washed into the cave by rainwater. Dating of the material surrounding it has not been conclusive, but appears consistent with the age of SCP-4020-A. As soon as its mouth was uncovered, SCP-4020 began to scream. 
Upon its extraction, it immediately endeavored to escape and struck out at the agents holding it. Despite its situation, its muscle appeared not to have atrophied. An agent attempted to administer a sedative via syringe, but was unable to insert the needle into SCP-4020's skin. An oral sedative was then forcibly administered, but did nothing to alter its behavior, and was quickly vomited up along with a small amount of stomach acid. SCP-4020 was ultimately tied up for transportation. The discovery site of SCP-4020-A and SCP-4020 appear largely unknown and unfrequented, and the cave system is only viably accessible by rope. Standard procedures have been undertaken to keep the area secure. Exploration is ongoing. Investigation. In accordance with the prognosis protocol, the O5 Council were alerted to the discovery of SCP-4020 and SCP-4020-A. By a vote of 9 to 2, 2 abstaining, it was decided that Dr. LaCroix should not be informed about the nature of SCP-4020 and that appropriate safeguards should be undertaken to prevent anyone who might recognize Dr. LaCroix from interacting with SCP-4020. Due to the minimal data provided by SCP-4020-A and the unlikelihood of rehabilitating SCP-4020's mind, further investigations were designated Priority 4 and placed under the purview of Senior Researcher. Note. The prognosis protocol mandates that all temporarily anomalous entities with the potential to provide information on future events are to be reported to the O5 Council as soon as they are identified by the Foundation. Two researchers stationed at Site-41. Dr. Norton and Dr. Pale were approached with regard to monitoring Dr. LaCroix. Dr. Norton was selected due to his similar age and field of specialization, and Dr. Pale due to his comparative seniority. Both agreed to befriend Dr. LaCroix and report regularly on his activities. Neither have been informed of the purpose of this observation. Dr. LaCroix's personal and office phone have been bugged, and his emails are being monitored. Experiment 4020-01 Purpose. To ascertain whether alterations made to SCP-4020-0 result in changes to SCP-4020. And also thereby to demonstrate whether SCP-4020 is indeed a future version of SCP-4020-0. Methodology. Requested a full report on SCP-4020's extensive scarring in order to identify clear patches of skin. On the evening of... SCP-4020-0 was sedated with the assistance of Dr. Pale and transported to a Foundation medical facility. Under the instructions of an incision was made on the back of SCP-4020-0's neck in order to create a small, straight scar. SCP-4020-0 was later returned to his apartment. Outcome. The operative tasked with looking at SCP-4020's neck for the scar insisted that there was no need to since he had already seen it on multiple occasions before. He also stated quite correctly that the mark had been logged in the report sent to... When questioned, the doctor discovered that he had lost the third page of the document, which had included the reference to this scar. Experiment 4020-02 Purpose To repeat experiment 4020-01 without external error. Methodology SCP-4020-0 was again sedated on the night of... After accepting Dr. Pale's invitation to a bar. After being transported to a foundation medical facility... The attending surgeon was instructed to make a curved incision on the back of SCP-4020-0's left upper arm. He was provided with a photograph of the area on SCP-4020's body to indicate where to cut. Outcome. Examination of SCP-4020's left upper arm revealed no such mark. However, it was shortly discovered that confusion on the part of the surgeon had resulted in the incision being made on the right upper arm instead. This mark was present on SCP-4020 and had already been logged. Further experiments of this nature have been put on indefinite hold. Addendum 1. Discovery of SCP-4020-B Nine days after the discovery of SCP-4020-A, a second piece of writing painted with an identical substance was found in a distant part of the same cave system. As with the site of SCP-4020's recovery, the area had been filled with earth and rock fragments. Rather than a single block of text, multiple sentences and sentence fragments, collectively designated SCP-4020-B, were spread across the cave walls at irregular angles. A transcript is given below in no particular order. Due to age-related degradation of the rock upon which SCP-4020-B is painted, a considerable amount of the text has been obscured. Don't forget that everyone like orange rays refresh, tangy, on the third day of Christmas. Seeds of game, sun stop, five weeks, five days, but it did gave. 41 leaks, they are all going to suffer. We are a mistake. How many 41s? G -d 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 John plus Alice. Sorry. Nick Norton plus Ma 
cassette on it. Beta expunged is a bad man. Beta expunged is dead then good. All a fault of the funk. Uh, they know and do nothing. Data expunged. Does not work the way that think it does. Data expunged will fail. We should not be here the end of nation. Threat to the institute is too high. Tell them foundation must give up. We are wrong. Data expunged. Copy all the report from Dr. Helen Carter to this isn't what either of us wanted to read today, but it needs to be taken care of as quickly and quietly as possible. Obviously, SCP-4020-B constitutes a major security breach. Goodness knows how SCP-4020-0 found out about, or finds out about, it expunged. but the references appear accurate. If there's any kind of leaking going on, it has to be plugged, and fast. I recommend shuffling security stuff, changing the currently used codes and passwords, and expunging every reference to data expunged from all non-essential documents. I would also suggest keeping additional eyes on SCP-4020-0. At this point, a honey trap might be in order. He is single. I can recommend. If data expunged is genuinely going to fail, then it is essential we know about it as soon as possible and have a viable backup ready. However, it must be emphasized that we should not automatically be taking SCP-4020's word as gospel just because he can repeat a few names. His writing seems quite unstable. Moreover, it also appears that for whatever reason, SCP-4020 developed some resentment for the Foundation itself. If there is a chance that this information was meant to be found, then it may not have been designed to help us. If 41 does refer to Site-41, then 41 leaks could be an indication of where SCP-4020-0 gets part of its information from. How many 41s is less clear. Official Foundation records state that there has only ever been one Site-41. However, a number of internal documents contain various pieces of contradictory information about this facility, and it may be subject to intentional misinformation by RAISA. Unfortunately, the rest of SCP-4020-B is not particularly useful right now, though more may well become apparent in time. In any case, if there is any chance at all of repairing SCP-4020's mind enough to get some semblance of sense out of it, we need to pursue it. Alice and John LaCroix are SCP-4020-0's parents and likely have nothing to do with Foundation matters but it may be worth monitoring any contact he has with them. The mention of Dr. Norton is unclear, but potentially concerning. It is recommended that he continue to monitor SCP-4020-0, but that Dr. Pale is requested to report on the activities of both. If there is any danger of Dr. Norton's observations being detected or compromised, he can always be moved. M. Blank Cassatt is presently unknown to the Foundation. Individuals with that surname are currently being catalogued and assessed. Data expunged are also not listed in Foundation records. However, any further investigation into their identities has been prohibited by Order of O5. Following the discovery of SCP-4020-B, security clearance to interact with SCP-4020 has been increased to level 3. Security clearance to know the nature of SCP-4020 has been increased to 4 oblique 4020 due to the sensitivity of the information it may be able to convey. As a result, the staff members who discovered SCP-4020-A and SCP-4020-B have now been amnesticized. The importance of restoring SCP-4020's mind has been upgraded to Priority 1. Dr. Sale's request to attempt music therapy has been approved. Dr. McKinley's request to test whether SCP-4020 can relearn to digest foodstuffs has been approved. Dr. Palomi's request to rehouse SCP-4020 in surroundings familiar to SCP-4020-0 has been approved.